Order. The next item on the order paper is a legislative consent motion for the Corporate Insolvency and Governance Bill. I will ask the clerk to read the motion. That this Assembly agrees to amendments to Northern Ireland's insolvency and company legislation to assist companies and mutuals in financial difficulties as a result of the coronavirus pandemic being included in the Corporate Insolvency and Governance Bill as introduced in the House of Commons. Thank you. I call the Minister for the Economy, Mrs Diane Dodds, to move the motion. Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. And apologies uh, um, for being Minister. Uh, you're whizzing through stuff here oh, uh, No, it's not. All, all I need is I beg to move. Mm -hmm. first. Sorry, I beg to move. Sorry, Thank you. Uh, the Business Committee has agreed that there should be no time limit on this debate, and I invite the Minister to open the debate on the motion. Minister. Thank you, um, Mr Speaker. Um, Mr Speaker, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, the Corporate Insolvency and Governance Bill was introduced in Parliament on 20 May 2020 by the Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. This bill has three main sets of measures to achieve its purpose. Firstly, it will introduce greater flexibility into the insolvency regime to give companies breathing space to explore options for rescue while supplies are protected. Secondly, by temporarily suspending parts of insolvency law to support directors trading through the emergency without the threat of personal liability and to protect companies from aggressive creditor action. And thirdly, to provide companies and other bodies with temporary easements on procedures for, filing, uh, and for company filing and statutory meetings. Insolvency and company legislation are devolved matters. However, it has been my department's policy and practice to maintain both in parity with that made at Westminster. This ensures that companies and insolvency professionals based in both jurisdictions operate to a common rulebook, which ensures ease of operation and reduces inefficiency. Mutuals legislation is also devolved, and while there are some minor differences with GB legislation, there has been an effort by my department and the Treasury to progress towards parity where practical. This ensures that mutual organisations working across jurisdictions, such as cooperatives, are not disadvantaged. To take similar legislation through the Assembly would take many months. As a result, I am seeking the Assembly's approval for the Westminster Bill to include the same amendments to Northern Ireland's legislation as are being introduced in Great Britain. This will ensure local businesses can take advantage of the emergency measures at the same time as those in Great Britain. Mr Speaker, the bill, as introduced in Westminster, comprises of a total of eight provisions aimed at assisting business. Three which had already been consulted upon are to be permanent. The other five measures provide for a temporary relaxation of some aspects of insolvency and company legislation. In summary, the provisions of the Bill are as follows. The first measure, which is intended to be permanent, involves amendments to insolvency legislation. It is to provide a freestanding moratorium to companies. Secondary legislation will follow to extend this to mutual societies. This will give struggling businesses a formal breathing space to explore the feasibility of a rescue or restructuring plan. It creates a 20-day moratorium during which no legal action can be taken against the company by creditors without leave of the court. This period can be further extended with the agreement of the court. During the moratorium, the company directors will still be in charge, though they will be supervised by a monitor who will be a licensed insolvency practitioner. The second permanent measure relates to termination clauses in supply, supply contracts. When a company enters an insolvency or restructuring procedure, suppliers will often either stop or threaten to stop supplying the company with essential goods or services. The supply contract normally gives them the right to do this, but it can jeopardise attempts to rescue the business. Provisions in the bill will mean that suppliers will not be able to jeopardise a rescue in this way. The third of the measures which are intended to be permanent takes the form of amendments to company legislation, 
and will result in the creation of a new procedure for restructuring. This new procedure will assist companies which, whilst viable, are struggling with debt obligations. It will allow courts to sanction a plan that binds all creditors to a restructuring plan if it is considered fair, equitable and in the interests of creditors. Again, this will be extended by some, to some mutuals by secondary legislation, with modifications to protect their unique position as member-owned and controlled organisations. Mr Speaker, the remaining provisions are temporary in nature and all are time-bound. The first three of these relate to changes in insolvency legislation. The first of these measures relates to the suspension of wrongful trading. At present, a court may order a director to be held personally liable where a company continues trading and the director knew or should have known that the company could not avoid insolvency. The bill will temporarily remove this threat and, as a result, remove the pressure on directors to close what may be otherwise a viable business. This provision will extend until the 30th of June 2020, or one month after the bill comes into force, whichever is later, although it may be extended by secondary legislation if deemed necessary. The next measure helps struggling businesses by temporarily removing the threat of winding up proceedings where unpaid debt is due to COVID-19. It also introduces temporary provisions to avoid statutory demands issued against companies during this, the emergency. These measures will give businesses the opportunity to reach realistic and fair agreements with all creditors and will also extend until the 30th of June or one month after the bill comes into force, whichever is later, and can also be extended by secondary legislation if necessary. The final insolvency provision will give my department or the Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, with the consent of my department, the power to regulate, to make temporary amendments to company or insolvency legislation. This would be done to keep to a minimum the number of businesses forced into an insolvency or restructuring procedure. For example, regulations could be made to change the eligibility conditions for insolvency or restructuring procedures. They could provide for the procedures not to apply or to apply in a modified form in particular cases. Any temporary changes made under these regulations must be removed as soon as the COVID-19 emergency is no longer impacting on corporate insolvencies or insolvency procedures. Furthermore, the power will expire in April 2020, although it may be extended, if absolutely necessary, by further legislation. Mr Speaker, the final two amendments deal with temporary changes to company legislation. The first of these deals with annual general meetings, which are central to good uh, corporate governance. Current social distancing restrictions do not permit large gatherings, and as a result, many companies cannot hold these meetings in accordance with their constitutions. This measure temporarily allows those companies to extend the period within which the meeting must be held or allow the meeting to be held by other means. This may be via electronic means so that all participants do not have to be at the same physical location at the same time. Mutuals will also be able to take advantage of similar arrangements with some minor modifications to reflect the different legislative requirements. The final measure relates to filing requirements at Companies House. Companies are required to make a, a number of different filings by fixed deadlines at Companies House each year. Missing the deadline automatically results in a financial penalty. Companies House has already done all it can under existing law to offer extensions to those deadlines. The bill allows for further extensions, enabling struggling businesses to focus on the things that matter most while they have reduced resources and restrictions in place. 
Mr Speaker, that is a brief summary of the main provisions of the proposed legislation. To conclude, therefore, we are all acutely aware of the significant impact of the pandemic on businesses across the world. In Northern Ireland, many local companies are struggling to continue to trade normally as a result of the restrictions put in place to limit the harm caused by COVID-19. As a result, there are many businesses which are fundamentally viable, but the impact of the pandemic is making it difficult for them to continue to trade or meet their legal duties. Therefore, the provisions in this bill will provide companies with the support and assistance that will help them avoid insolvency during this period of economic uncertainty and maximise their chances of survival. The same package of measures needs to be made av available to businesses in Northern Ireland so that they are not placed at a disadvantage. It needs to be put in place at the same time as the rest of the United Kingdom. That is why I am seeking the Assembly's consent to provision for Northern Ireland being included in the Bill in Westminster. Therefore, Mr Speaker, I commend the motion to the Assembly. Thank you, Minister. I call Dr Kiva Archibald, the Chair of the Economy Committee. Um, I'm on rise to speak as Chair of the Economy Committee, and I will be as brief as possible. Um, the Corporate Insolvency and Governance 20, Bill 2019-21 was introduced to the House of Commons and given its first reading on the 20th of May 2020. MPs will consider all stages of the Bill tomorrow. The Committee welcomes the basis for this Bill. However, members have some issues which I will detail later. As the bill indicates, due to enforced restrictions on movement and gatherings introduced with the aim of curbing the spread of COVID-19, many otherwise economically viable businesses are experiencing significant trading difficulties. The bill is aimed at ensuring businesses can maximise their chances of survival. The bill reforms the corporate insolvency regimes here and in Britain, introduced on an urgent basis to assist businesses dealing with the effects of the lockdown resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. The bill contains temporary measures proposed as a direct result of the pandemic, which will leave companies from complying with aspects of insolvency and company law. There is also a package of permanent reforms to the corporate insolvency and governance framework. These measures were consulted on by the British Government in 2016. To summarise, it will not be possible to petition to have companies wind up where the statutory demand was served during a specified period beginning 1 March 2020. The court's right to make winding up orders will be suspended where a company's inability to pay its debts is a consequence of coronavirus. Di directors will have immunity from liability for wrongful trading where deterioration in a company's finances during a specified period is attributable to the virus. Companies get a moratorium free from creditor pressure to ass assess their best rescue or restructuring. Provisions will ensure that companies have access to the services and supplies they need if they are being kept open during a moratorium or insolvency procedure. A new power will allow amendment of corporate insolvency or governance legislation to address problems caused by COVID-19. Proposed amendments to company law will provide a rescue and restructuring procedure and measures to ensure those companies required by law to hold AGNs will be able to do so safely, consistent with the restrictions on movement and gatherings. Legislation dealing with insolvency and mutuals is a devolved matter, so legislative consent is therefore required here, and the Committee welcomes these measures. The Legislative Consent Memorandum was laid in the Assembly on 21 May 2020. The draft motion was contained in the memorandum, and the motion itself was laid on the same day, with a date set for debate of the motion being today, Tuesday 3 June. It will be no surprise to members that the Committee for the Economy has not had much time to consider the motion and take relevant evidence as per normal procedure. The Committee has done what it can in the time available to undertake some small degree of consultation. The Department did not undertake consultation regarding the content of the motion. The Minister has indicated to the Committee that it would take considerably longer to pass an Act of the Assembly to introduce <coughs> these measures into law here than it does by using the Westminster Bill and this LCM. The committee acknowledges the issue, that issue and would not wish to see local businesses unable to avail of the same support and relief as that available to struggling companies in Britain. The committee is very supportive of the fact that the bill will mean that credit unions, 
cooperatives and community benefit societies will benefit from the same easements that are being proposed for companies as regards meetings. As I have already said, the Committee understands the need for the measures to support businesses at a time of unprecedented difficulty and is broadly supportive of the Bill and the Minister for the Economy's actions to allow such measures as are necessary to be put in place via legislation at Westminster on behalf of her Department through an LCM approved by the Assembly. If I could briefly reflect on the Committee's consideration of the Bill and the LCM. The Department wrote to members on 21 April 2020 to inform the Committee of the Bill's introduction in the House of Commons by the British Business Secretary and that the Minister <coughs> intended to bring forward an LCM to enable amendments to the insolvency legislation to be in the Bill. Prior to the introduction of the Bill in the LCM, at its meeting on 6 May, the Committee received an oral briefing from officials from the Department's Insolvency Service who outlined the detail of the Bill as it related to the North. At its meeting on 13 May 2020, the Committee considered correspondence from the Department updating it on the expected date of the Bill, its content, and informing the Committee that as a result of the accelerated passage of the Bill through the House of Commons, it would not be possible for the Committee to have the normal period to produce its report. The Committee agreed at its meeting on 13 May that despite the extremely narrow window of opportunity to carry out a consultation exercise with stakeholders, it would do so and wrote to stakeholders on 15 May. This brief consultation was based on the information the Committee had already received from the Department. However, at that point, it did not include the Bill or the Legislative Consent Memorandum. The Committee received written evidence from the Irish League of Credit Unions and Enterprise NI. Members are extremely grateful to them for doing so in a short period of time. Again, due to the considerable time restrictions, the Committee was unable to take oral evidence on the Bill or the LCM. The ICLU also noted the limited time scale within which consideration of the LCM was undertaken. The organisation, the organisation had some high-level discussions with the Department around the proposals. However, the body did not have prior sight or knowledge of the detail of the Bill. The ILCU indicated it is supportive of measures seeking to provide flexibility, proportionality and protection <coughs> for credit unions and how they undertake their activities during the current circumstances, and welcome temporary flexibility in respect of AGMs to allow such meetings to be held by other means, even if a credit union's rules does not allow it. The response particularly highlighted that Schedule 14 of the Bill applies to meetings held between the 26th of March 2020 and the 30th of September 2020. The year, year end for credit union accounting purposes here is the 30th of September. The ILCU affiliated credit unions under the ILCU standard rules for credit unions must hold their general meetings within four months of September 30th, i.e. by the end of January 2021. Traditionally, most local credit union AGMs are held in November and December. The response notes that under paragraph 2 of Schedule 14, an earlier or later date may be substituted by the appropriate national authority. The ILCU suggests that, as social distancing measures may well be in place beyond September 2020, the Department considers making regulations which extend the relevant period to incorporate the normal calendar of credit union AGMs, which take place in three months after the 30th of September. The ILCU expressed concern that holding virtual AGNs will mean increased costs and cyber security implications. Additionally, the ILCU highlights the important that important issues like declarations of dividends or interest rebates can only be approved via AGM, so voting, electronically means, uh, voting via electronic means is likely to be an area that credit unions will need to look at as a consequence of the bill. The ILCU seeks clarity regarding whether it is the Department's intention that regulations will be made should credit unions require additional time to complete their AGMs. Enterprise NI responded to the Committee without having prior sight of the Bill or LCM. In its response to the Committee, ENI suggests that the period proposed by the Bill to prevent the presentation of winding up petitions should be extended to cover cases where the statutory demand was served between 1 March and 31 October 2020. ENI believes that protection is required for a longer period to protect businesses who will inevitably experience COVID-19 related difficulties as government support ends and the cost of reboot and recovery kick in. ENI welcomes the bill forbidding the courts to make, from making a winding up order where the insult company's insolvency is due to debts incurred as a result of COVID-19. However, insolvency can occur as a result of loss of income as well as accrued debt. ENI believes that 
evidenced lost income as a result of COVID-19 should also be considered when forbidding the court to make a winding up order. ENI recognises that the businesses must provide reasonable evidence to demonstrate the link to COVID-19 impact and that this needs embedded in the bill to decrease the number of incidents of potential fraud. ENI suggests there should be a sunset clause added covering a suggested period of time when urgency prevails, perhaps 31st of <coughs> December 2020. ENI believes that not time limiting the Secretary of State for business having this power could generate unintended consequences in the future at a time beyond the present crisis. On the basis of the very limited time available to the committee to scrutinise this LCEM and bearing in mind the Minister's view that it is necessary for the legislation to be undertaken by the Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy to ensure that local businesses are protected to the same degree as those in Britain and to do so through this assembly would require a much longer process, the Committee for the Economy agrees to support this legislative consent motion. The committee would ask that the Minister urgently engages with stakeholders, particularly the Irish League of Credit Unions. And I'll just make some very brief comments in my capacity as Sinn Féin Economy spokesperson. Um, the impact of COVID-19 on businesses, as has been outlined many times, is huge and it is very varied in terms of including how they operate. So the provisions of this LCM are welcome. Obviously, we always prefer that devolved matters are dealt with by the Assembly. But as has been said regularly in these times, we are facing unprecedented circumstances and the, bil the ability to make further changes remains devolved. Um, individuals will also face difficult financial circumstances uh, um, currently, and I would therefore ask the Minister whether any measures are required in terms of solvency, insolvency in that regard also. Graham Eggert. Thank you. I call Mr Gordon. Tom. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. I welcome the opportunity to speak on the Corporate Insolvency and Governments Bill today. This bill is designed to ensure businesses who have experienced significant trading difficulties throughout the coronavirus epidemic are given adequate opportunity to survive. The measures in the bill are twofold, with both temporary relief measures and more permanent reforms being introduced. The bill complements both the UK governments and their, and their executives' financial support measures which have been such a lifeline for so many businesses right across Northern Ireland and brings us into line on a level par with GP and will help to streamline some of the normal requirements which are just not possible to, to fulfil while the current restrictions remain in place. Although the committee has only had a limited time to consider the LCM, I and my colleagues are happy to support this and believe it is essential to give the same level of protection to our local businesses, many of whom have been so fairly affected through this pandemic, and also to assist with their rescue, reorganisation, restructuring, whilst also importantly safeguarding employment going forward. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Mr Dunn. Uh, the Business Committee has agree agreed to meet at 1pm. I propose, therefore, by leave of the Assembly to suspend this sitting until 2 p.m. We will return to this item of business at 2 p.m. when the Minister will conclude and wind the debate. Sitting is by leave suspended. Thank you. The Assembly has now resumed and we return to the Legislative Consent Motion on the Corporate Insolvency and Governance Bill. And I now call on the Minister for the Economy, Mrs Diane Dawes, to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. May I begin by thanking members for their very helpful contributions and support for the motion, and also to thank uh, colleagues in the Executive and the Economy Committee for considering this matter in such a timely manner, uh, and which has allowed this motion to be debated today. Um, I want to um, very briefly address um, some of the points that were raised uh, by the Chair of the Economy Committee, uh, and I thank her for her consideration uh, of these particular points. Um, she raised an issue around um, the credit unions and the need uh, to extend the period beyond the 30th of September uh, for annual general meetings. We, of course, will respond uh, to any need to extend that uh, deadline um, and will do so in a timely manner. And I thank her for that um, uh, indication. 
Um, we also um, have um, had uh, some uh, thought around those the extending statutory notifications and winding up periods because of cash flow difficulties. Um, and uh, we will um, be looking at those and, and, and trying to um, keep um, the power of really the issue is to try to temporarily limit the power of creditors uh, to use their statutory demands uh, in ways which are not keeping with the government's call for forbearance uh, for companies during uh, this period. She also raised an important point about the general power to modify uh, insol insolvency law. Um, and I understand that this can uh, cause um, issues. Um, however, can I uh, reassure uh, the House today and the Chair of the Committee that this power will be temporary? It will only be used um, where uh, it is needed uh, to reduce the impact of the COVID-19 uh, emergency on corporate insolvency and insolvency procedures, and only where this cannot be achieved by non-legislative means. Um, the power cannot be used to create new criminal offences or amend existing criminal penalties, um, and the temporary changes in this nature must be removed um, as soon as uh, the COVID-19 emergency is no longer impacting and will expire in uh, April 2021. And I hope that this gives the committee and the House some reassurance in relation to these matters. I hope that my responses to the debate have helped members understand why they should vote for this consent motion. By passing this motion, the Assembly will provide greater opportunities for company survival and better returns for creditors during and after the COVID-19 emergency. These amendments will give business owners more flexibility during the emergency to focus on the things that matter most while they have reduced resources and continued restrictions. Mr Speaker, to conclude, and most importantly, the provisions of the Bill will help companies improve their chances of survival, protect jobs and support Northern Ireland's economic recovery. I commend the motion to the Assembly and thank members for their support. Members, the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. <clears throat> the next item of business 